Hello and welcome to episode 28 of Novel Knits. My name is Danelle and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about what I'm knitting and what I'm reading and anything else that comes up while we're chatting together. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is November. We are in the fourth quarter of our year-long make-alongs. I'm so excited about that. Um, I am going to miss them, but I'm really excited to not have to talk about them every time that I get on here to record. I am coming to you as always from my basement in southeastern Wisconsin. It is very, very uh, gloomy today. We've had some rain, so I'm, I hope my lighting is all right. And yeah, I live here with my husband, Nathan, and our two kids, Claire and Milo. Claire's 14. Milo is 11 for a little bit longer. And our dog, Penelope, who's eight. <laughs> You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Novel Knit Girl, and everything I talk about today and where you can find me will be listed below this video. So any yarns, any patterns, any bags, any books, it will all be listed below. So today I have uh, some vital few, I have some finished objects, and I have some works in progress, and probably a lot of chatting because I feel like it's been a while since I've been on here. So end of the year-long make-alongs. We have less than two months remaining. So the first one is Shop Your Stash 2022, which is anything that you've made this year using Stash Yarn is eligible to be entered. You can still enter. You do not have to have participated in either make-along all year to enter now for the grand prize. And I did show the prizes in my last episode. So if you are interested, please check that out. Basically, uh, the physical prizes are two skeins of yarn and a knitting book each. And there will also be some other goodies because I have some other things in mind. And then I'm giving away four pattern prizes. So two for each make along. The other make along is sweater year 2022, which is where we're trying to make as many sweaters as we can. Or if you just wanna make one sweater and enter it, or if you wanna make a baby sweater or a dog sweater, whatever kind of sweater you wanna make is eligible. And um, the only kind of loose, guidelines that I had put up are no vests and no tank tops, but I'm not kicking anybody out. So if it's a sweater to you, it's a sweater to me. And I hope that we can all reach any of our stash and sweater goals by the time we get to the end of this year. I think I'm going to fall a little short because I had a sock issue <laughs> where my sock mojo came in real hard and took over for a couple of months, but I'm really back with my sweaters now and I'm really excited. And you guys, I'm pretty proud of myself. I think I've finally made some changes. <laughs> like, I have only ordered one new skein of yarn in the last two to three months. I, If I had known how momentous it was going to be, I would have taken note of the date. But I have not been buying yarn, which is really great for someone who is like a serial yarn buyer. Like, I love having it delivered to my home. I love looking forward to it. I love holding it and squishing it and storing it away and staring at it and not using it. But I really feel like I've made a shift. So if you're struggling, I think you can do it if it's something that you want to do. And it doesn't mean I don't still want to buy yarn because I definitely do. But I've just found myself thinking, going to my stash more, which is all that I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to go to my stash when it came time to make something new and I feel that I have actually started that habit and made it a part of my life and I've realized how huge my stash is and I'm good I'm really good so that being said I do have some yarn to show today but I had bought this a long time ago because it's advent yarn and I'm not really really going to show it but anyway I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing really well with shopping my stash and making sweaters, which was the whole reason I started these two make-alongs this year. So I'm pretty proud of myself and I hope that if you guys have been shopping your stashes or making sweaters that you've been waiting to make that you're proud of yourselves too because it's pretty cool. Um, it's a great thing. So I guess I've sort of transitioned into Vital Few, which is where I just talk about a couple things going on in my life you are returning, then you know some of this. And thank you so much for coming back. I always look forward to seeing your comments and interacting with you. And I just, I'm grateful. But I had a lot of travel. So I should address the two elephants in the room. One is that I got my hair cut and I don't love it. It's fine. It's not like awful, but I really just decided I like my hair longer and it'll be growing out again. 
And the other elephant is the room is I did not go to Rhinebeck. I had, even if I'd wanted to go, I couldn't have gone. Um, I really have loved looking at everybody's posts on Instagram and everybody's recap videos on YouTube. And, you know, people that I am consider myself sort of internet friends with, meeting each other and being a little bit jealous. And then thinking, I'm not sure I'll ever go to Rhinebeck, to be completely honest. It looks amazing, but I am also so introverted that I think I would spend the whole time looking away and trying to hide because I'd be so overwhelmed <laughs> to see like people. I would need like a designated extrovert to bring me around, I think. Um, but I don't know, it looks so great, but it also looks very, very scary. <laughs> But it seems like everybody that I at least follow who went looks like they had a great time. So I'm glad about that. But no, I did not go to Rhinebeck and I don't have plans to go anytime in the future. Um, but yeah, let's see. And then, so I did have two work trips. And if you don't know, I work full time from home and I have for over six years now. I never leave the house. <laughs> and then with COVID, I hadn't worked, I hadn't traveled for work in over three years. So then to have two work trips in one month was like really overwhelming and exhausting. My first trip, I went to San Diego and it rained the entire time I was there, except for the one day that we went hiking 45 minutes away on a mountain and it was 95 degrees and we were all overdressed. And I think I, I'm surprised I didn't pass out, but it was, it was fine. Um, it was a really, really busy, busy trip. I, it, I came back just totally exhausted. And right before I left for that trip, my dad turned 81. And the day after he turned 81, he had a really bad AFib attack where he passed out and his heart stopped and it was very scary. And he's had AFib for a long time, but he's never gone down, um, never this. And then he had AFib attacks daily after that. So he got a, a pacemaker and he's doing really well right now. But it was a very scary thing to have happened the day before I was leaving for my trip. And then while I was in San Diego, a tornado came through our neighborhood and our my kids were sheltering in place at school. It was just like, I felt like it was a sign from the universe that you're not meant to travel. Um, but anyway, I was home for a week, it was busy, and then I went to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and thank God I looked at the weather forecast before I left because it was in the 40s and snowing, and I almost had to buy a $160 cashmere hat from one of their gift shops because my ears were so cold, and although I'd packed a coat, I did not pack headwear, and I was really regretting it. And everybody was kind of joking with me, like, oh, you're a knitter, knit something up real quick, ha ha ha. <laughs> it was too cold to find any humor in it. And this was a really great trip, actually. This was with my immediate team and a slightly larger team. It was really nice to connect with people. I hadn't realized how much I missed it after three years because generally I like being home and working from home, but it was great to make those connections again and remember like we're all human beings. We're not just like bots on a screen. And it was, it was really, really good. Um, the only bad thing was my flight, so I live in Milwaukee area, I had to take my first flight to Chicago and for some reason that flight, I have never been on a flight that twisted and went sideways so much and we were over Lake Michigan and it was six in the morning and so it was dark out and the lights outside and I had a window seat. I've never had issues flying before. I've probably flown hundred times in my life and I've never had this happen before and I I had got such a stomach ache I thought I was gonna not I don't know if I really ever felt like I was gonna vomit but I was like something is not right and then I was really concerned because I had I flew into Albuquerque sorry this is getting long I'll wrap it up really quick I flew into Albuquerque and the last time I was at Albuquerque more than 20 years ago I did have some elevation uh, sickness or altitude sickness so I was concerned about that and then my stomach already hurt but once I got there I did not have any problems with the elevation or the altitude and um, my stomach continued to be kind of off the whole time and then of course New Mexico is all spicy 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 food so 
that was the only bad thing was my stomach was just like, I hate you. And I was like, I get it. I'm sorry. And uh, so then I came home and it was the weekend of Halloween. Let's get into the knitting and stuff, shall we? I am wearing today my watercolored pullover by a Tiff Nealon. I'm not going to stand up because I'm wearing sweatpants and it does not look very nice uh, beyond this point. So I made this, I think at the beginning of this year, This so this counts as one of my sweaters for sweater year 2022. 20, and this is DK yarn held double. Um, I know the green and the white are from Yarn Cafe Creations. Let's see if I can remember what I did for... I don't remember what, what I held double for the main body, but I like it. It's really nice. Um, it, it's a nice fitting sweater. It looks good in general. It comes right to my waist, so it's a good sweater to wear with jeans. I could also wear it over a dress if I wanted to. I don't really have the shape for that cute look with like a sweater over a dress. I, I'm just not really shaped well for dresses in general, <laughs> unless it's like, um, I don't know, something that's more tailored, but like those really flowy, like t-shirt dresses look terrible on me. And even putting a, a, a sweater over it, it's just not, it's just, I wish it worked for me, but it just doesn't. But anyway, that's what I'm wearing. Um, I'll probably do a recap video in January of all the sweaters that I knit this year. So I, I'll try to remember a little bit more about the sweater by the time I talk about it then. And then I wanted to show you guys before I jump into my finished objects. Um, my mom, I make my mom probably two to three pairs of socks a year. And she was like, my favorite socks got holes in them. And I said, well, you know, bring them over. I'll try to darn it. And she's like, I don't think you'll be able to darn it. I was like, I think maybe I could. So I, I bought a darning egg and I was all set to darn these socks. And I, I'm not going to darn these socks for my mom. Um, <laughs> so for two reasons. One is my mom puts her socks in the washing machine. These were beautifully self-striping self yarn. I mean, the whole thing should look like that. For some reason, the top has kind of felted weirdly in the washing machine don't know what she did, but knowing that I'm going to change up some of the yarns I use for her, which there's nothing wrong. If that's what she wants to do, she can do it. But then the other thing is, this is the bottom. And do you see how threadbare that is? I could darn this up for her, but I'd feel like I would have to make the patch cover the whole sole of the foot. And I'm not really willing to do that. I'd rather just make her another pair of socks. And I have a lot of sock tubes that I can make a couple pair for her quite easily. So this is the other one. I mean, it's the same there and just super, super, th I mean, look how thin that is. So I'm learning a lot about my mom. I, I mean, my mom is older, she's 77 and you know, as you get older, you shuffle your feet a little bit. And I feel like that's maybe why they are getting worn so much here. So I'm going to look into like reinforcing that a little bit, if there is anything out there. What I'm not going to do is duplicate stitch. Um, for sure not doing that. <laughs> but if there's some other way of reinforcing, I might look into that for her. Otherwise, I'll just keep making her socks. I have plenty of yarn. I have plenty of sock tubes. I've got at least right now, winter is coming and I'll have time to make her some socks. So these sadly are going to go in the trash. Um, they were her favorites and I know this was a nomadic, nomadic yarns colorway. I don't remember which one, but I mean, it was, it was so pretty. These were so pretty and she loved them a lot. So, and she wore them a lot and washed them a lot, even though I've told her you don't have to wash them every time you wear them. You know, you can wear them four to five times unless you step on food or dog pee. I don't know, like something that would make you go like, oh, these need to be washed. Do you guys agree? I mean, I, I probably wash my socks every three wears. Like I will put on a pair of hand knit socks and wear them for three days. I also don't. I feel like I sound a little bit like a crazy person today. 
All right, on to finished objects. Oh my gosh, 16 minutes in and we're just getting to finished objects. All right, I finished my first pair of, okay, let me back up. I did finish something that I am not gonna be able to show today. I already gifted it. My brother-in-law turned 40 and we had a bullying birthday party for him and everybody brought him a cozy, like a beer cozy, cozy, right? <laughs> so, some people like had one especially made for him. Some found like Milwaukee ones. There was a big variety and I knit him one. So I knit the classic can koozie by Knitty Natty out of just some scrap yarn I had. I had thought about maybe duplicate stitching his name, but it it's a ribbing pattern. So then I thought, well, that maybe you can duplicate stitch ribbing, but I'm not going to. But anyway, it turned out great and it's lovely. I have a picture of it in my Ravelry. So if you do want to see it, you can for sure check out my Ravelry. I'll have it linked below. But yeah, so that was done and made in time for his party. I don't even remember when that happened sometime in the past month. I think that was between my trips. <laughs> it's been busy. So then I finished the Textured Socks Three Ways by Dana Ray Makes. And this is the first pair I made. So I love these socks. They are just a great texture sock. It's just knits and pearls all the way down. I did a fish lips kiss heel and um, like a slightly rounded toe. The yarn that I used is Dragon Horde yarn on her lower base and this is called Vintage Fall. So the way I do my toes now, they don't look totally like a wedge toe. They're kind of I don't think they're really rounded, but it's got a, it's got a different, less sharp um, wedge shape. It's a little bit softer of a wedge shape and I like it a little bit better. The next one I will be trying will be the umbrella toe, but I haven't gotten there yet. So the thing that I thought was really interesting about the yarn, oh, quickly before I go there, is 64 stitches magic loop for both of these. But the thing I found interesting about this yarn is see how this pair really did flashing and pooling and this one really didn't until a little bit on the toe. I mean, this is how I wish all of it looked, but I also don't mind the flashing and pooling and I think they're really pretty. This color was just a blast to knit. I. I loved knitting all of those colors. It was just always, I don't know, just exciting what color was going to come up next. Okay, and then I finished, I did a test knit for Nicole of Professor Pearl, and I test knit her Read More socks. So I'll show them to you on the blocker, and then I'll take them off. So here it is. So you can see this is on one of my larger blockers. These turned out quite big. I did the middle size and for me, they turned out really, really large. So these are gonna be a gift for my mom, which I think is wonderful since she needs socks, right? She does have to wait till Christmas and my mom is a huge reader. That is where I got my reading from. Um, but yeah, so here it is. I love the cables on these. I'm gonna be making another pair for myself because I enjoyed it so much. Like this middle cable is so pretty. Um, I just love it. And then they say, one foot says read on the bottom and the other one says more. And this is my first time duplicate stitching. It's not perfect, but it's also not bad. I think that I will now have confidence to do it again. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to put read more on the bottom of the socks that I make for myself. I'm just not sure. Um, but this was a an excellent knit. Great for learning a new skill. So it has the duplicate stitch on the bottom and then it also has a cut in heel. One of my cut in heels went perfect. Like 
beautiful. Everything about it was great. It was like I could have filmed a tutorial. It went so well. And the other one was a hot, 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 hot mess. And I had to do a lot of stitching up on the sides to make it work. So I'm still not a, um, I'm still not an expert at cut in heels, but I do think I'm getting better. But I really, really enjoyed making these um, DK weight. So they they went pretty quickly. Um, this is the the yarn is by the Little Wolf Knits. It's her DK, and the main color is Bonfire, and then the contrast color is Rusted Spokes. And I loved this color so much. So in Nicole's pattern, she does like sporty stripes in here, and I just wanted to use more of this yarn. I could have done the heel in that color too, but I just decided not to. But I loved it so much, I wanted to use this yarn right away. So I cast it on a hat. I don't remember. I should write down my cast on dates for you so that you know. And I made the Tuesday hat by Jody Brown. And I'm really happy with it. So this is using that Little Wolf Knits uh, Rusted Spokes. And this is gonna be for my sister for her birthday. I sent her a picture the other day and I asked her if she liked it and she said, yeah. And then, cause I sent her like a picture of me like, do you like this? And she said, yeah, it'd be really great with a, with a puffy pom-pom on it. And I said, oh, like this? And she said, yeah, that's perfect. I said, okay, that's what you're getting for your birthday. So this is um, a pom-pom from Big Bad Wool. And it's a pom-pom with uh, a snap. So I'll have to tell her that it's removable if she ever wants to wash it. Uh, my sister is not a knitter. So I have to be very careful with her, like tell her, if, you, if you're gonna wash this, that's fine. Lay it out flat to dry, take off the pom-pom, snap snap it back on when it's done so but I think this is a really pretty pattern mm -hmm. it was super easy I loved it I made a mistake um it was really easy to tink back and fix it I just I, th I thought it was great I would make this again I made this out of DK I think it's a bit light like you can kind of see it's it's not very substantial so I think I would make this again and use a worsted weight and make it a little bit warmer on the same size needles and just hope for it to just be a little bit tighter gauge and keep your head a little bit warmer. I live in Wisconsin, so I need a warm hat. Um, my sister lives in Seattle and she needs this hat <laughs> and it's really beautiful. So very easy. Again, I am loving textures lately and yeah, this made me really happy and it was very, very quick. I've made a lot of Jody Brown's patterns and generally they're all really good. No complaints ever. <laughs> all right, that is it for finished objects. Into whips. This is the main bag I brought with me and I had two different socks in here and I'll just get into it. So that textured socks three ways by Dana Ray makes. I'm working on the other two textured socks. So I'm gonna have a trio of socks by the time I'm done. I am hoping to finish these um, by Christmas. One pair is gonna be for my daughter, but the other ones are for me, so. <laughs> um, but I'll start with the one, so I don't think I've shown this one on here yet. So this is the one, it's called Columns. And I did cast on with a contrasting color that I thought worked really well with this. Um, so this is the columns version. It's just slipped stitches in there. And the yarn that I'm using is Yarn Cafe Creations Biscotti Sock Yarn. And this is the spiked gingerbread coffee color, which I love this color so much. She put it on her Instagram once and I went right to her website to buy it. And then I was like, let me just check, cause I have my stash on Ravelry. So I'm like, let me just check my stash. And I was like, oh, I already have that one. I, as much as I love it, I don't need two skein. So this is how it looks not with the textured pattern. And this is the textured pattern. And I just used a mini I had for the cuff. And I think it works really well. And again, I'm doing fish lips kiss heel for all of these socks just out of ease. And I was traveling and I didn't want to be picking up gussets, you know, or turning heels. I just I wanted it as simple as possible. And this one is done. I just have to graft the toe and then I'll be ready to cast on the next one. It is interesting. It kind of looks waffly when 
it's not on your foot like it kind of looks plaid ish but then when you put your foot inside of it 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 just looks like columns so it's really nice i like it a lot and i really really have been wanting to use this yarn for a really long time so i'm really glad i did this is old not old stash probably like last year i got this yarn um here's the yarn and the cake spiked gingerbread coffee and then I finished the first of my I think she calls this like stacked circles pattern so it looks like this and I showed this last time so I just finished this one and fish lips heel 64 stitches magic loop and this color is Lolo did it, the uh, low original sock in the Quibbler. And this one I think is going to be for Claire for Christmas. I just really, really love the colors. If you can see that subtle kind of purple. And then there's like these little pops of blue every once in a while that are like really vibrant. And it's just a really pretty stretchy pattern. And her feet are still growing. So I think these will work for her. And while I was in I have no idea what state I was in I cast it on the second one and this was a nice one to do on the plane so I did most of the foot of the sock on the plane on one plane ride and I did this on another plane ride I did the majority of this in New Mexico either flying there in the hotel or flying home I mean, most of my flights were over were two hours or more, except for a couple jumper flights like Milwaukee to Chicago. And then I had on the way home, I had Albuquerque to Phoenix, I think. I don't know. Traveling right now out of Milwaukee anywhere, nothing's direct. I have to always fly to a hub. And then Albuquerque was especially difficult for flying in and out of. Everybody had issues. There were a lot of problems. So don't know if we'll go back there, but it was fun. So here's the Quibbler in its ugly little cake. So yeah, these are fun. And like I said, I'm hoping the, this pair for sure for Christmas for Claire. And I would like to finish these as well by the end of the year if I can, just to clear off some needles. I... Uh, I got struck by the sock fairy and now I just want to make them all. <laughs> and so this is in, um, I believe this is my Tanny Casey bag. I've had this for a few years. It's got this great wax canvas on the bottom. This was excellent for traveling. I couldn't get my yarn caught in any zippers because that is like a fatal flaw for me on airlines. I'm always stuffing my socks like into something and a lot of times I'll just zip really quickly and then I zip my yarn in and then sometimes it breaks. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's it for those socks. Okay, I kind of have a lot, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I did bring my sister's shawl with me. So if you've been watching, I was working on that muscle burrow for my sister, and now that I made her the Tuesday hat, I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue with that muscle burrow or not. I'm just not positive. Part of me just thinks like, just finish it and it'll work for you or somebody, but I don't know if I like it. I might rip it back and do blocks of color instead of the thin stripes. I'm talking like this, like you guys should just know what I'm talking about, but I, I'm i just not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. So that one's just hibernating right now. So I'm working on for her the Garter Triangle Shawl by Loop Designs, and I'm using Noro Kegagori yarn. And this is going slow. Um, <laughs> here it is. It doesn't look that much bigger than the last time I showed it. Holy cow, this has taken forever. So this is the Noro. It's, I think, a cotton silk blend. Let me see. Cotton, silk, viscose, and polyamide. 
So here it is in its cakes. I have a lot more to go. <laughs> and I don't know why, it's just garter, but this isn't my favorite thing to pick up and work on right now. But it's coming along. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. It feels like work, this one. And this is in um, this big by Sassy Sacks that I won from Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting last year. This is a nice size bag. It would work for a sweater for sure. So the sweater that I did put a little bit of time on my Eastbound sweater, but not enough to show it this time. Hope, I'm hoping to pick that up after I get through a few of these. The sweater I've been working on the most has been the Harvest Sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, this has just been what I wanna work on. I think it's a combination of the color of the yarn being my favorite color in the whole wide world. And I just drop stitches. Let me just throw those back on the needle. I can fix that later. I think it's a combination of the sweater and the ease of the knit. This is stockinette. It's just relaxing. I can see it growing. It's fantastic. So Harvest by Tin Can Knits. I am making this in Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Shire Heather, which is a really pretty green. The depth of color on this is way more than I would have guessed prior to starting the sweater. It is so pretty. Every time I see it, I'm just like, I love this color so much. So here it is so far. It does have a few mistakes nothing major. I'm making the medium large size. When I did a gauge swatch, my gauge was small. So I had fewer stitches per inch. So I went up to a, a higher needle and I didn't read gauge swatch. And I just thought I want to make sure I have enough room. So I'm making like the, they have like a small, medium, medium, and medium large. And I decided to make the medium large. And I think it's a little too big. It's okay. I mean, it's going to be fine. But I mean, I mean, I have this on over another sweater and it feels a little big, not ridiculously big, um, but it'll be, it'll be a, a roomy sweater for me, which is fine. I'm totally fine with it. All right. Sweater on a sweater. <laughs> um, I like it a lot and I'm really enjoying it and I'm trying to finish the body this weekend so that I can change out this cord for another sweater that I'm working on. Because, you know, you have interchangeable needles and then you have different projects and only so many cords. And so I'm really focused this weekend on trying to finish the body. And then I have um, those smaller circulars that I can use for the sleeves and it'll be good to go. So enjoying this. Big pros are that the button band is going on at the same time as the body. Only one size needle. You don't have to do different size needles for collar and um, body or color work. You know, it's one needle for the whole project. Once you get past like doing, and it's a free pattern, that's another bonus. So once you get past like starting it, which you do just a strip of garter, and then you kind of do like a little finicky, like picking up thing, but it's nothing hard if you have any kind of sweater knitting experience. Once you get past that, it's really super easy. I have a few minor mistakes. Um, a couple of places where I did the increases, not perfectly, but I think it'll look fine once it's blocked. This has been, my happy place project. So I'm really, really enjoying it. And hopefully that'll be done soon. So I mean, nothing like, you know, giving yourself crazy goals. I'm going to finish at least four more sweaters in the next like five weeks. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try. So because my Miserina could be done, my Eastbound sweater could probably be done. This could definitely be done. And I signed up for two sweater test knits. <laughs> So that's what I'll go into next. Um, the first one is, I mean, 
how often does Tiffany Lynn have a test call that I don't apply for? I mean, I and the nice thing about t TIFF is I think I've been selected for almost every test net that I have applied for. Like she doesn't really turn you away, which is very kind. Um, but I am testing for her, her Notion sweater. So my printer was out of uh, colored ink, so that's why it looks like this, but it is not striped like that. So this version on the cover looks cropped. I am, I'm not doing a cropped version, I'm doing standard length. And then she's got two different options for this where you could hold DK double to make bulky, which is what I did with this sweater, or you can hold four strands of fingering. And at first I was like, that sounds like a nightmare. And then I thought, I have the perfect yarn for that. So I am holding four strands of fingering double. There are instructions to do a fade. I am not doing a fade. I am just doing um, the four strands of yarn. So before I go any further, the yarn I'm using is, I'm using two, two strands of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in Midnight Heather. And then probably some of my deepest stash. This is from Stranded Dye Works. It's a beautiful merino base and it's called Shiner. And this is yarn I've wanted to knit with forever. And so I'm holding two strands of that. And I would wanted to put these two colors together in a marl for a long time. And I had thought about doing it with another Tiffany Lynn pattern. Um, I think the Wanderer. And I, when this opportunity came up, I was like, I should just use it for this. So that's what I'm doing and I'm excited. I'm not very far. I'm, um, I finished the short rows and now I'm just in the raglan increases and I will be attaching a collar. So this does not include a collar, but this is what it looks like right now. So that's what those two yarns look like together. And this makes like a bulky weight. And I love it. I love it so much. This color for me, oh my gosh, I love it. I love this. So this is gonna be kind of my next big priority just because it's bulky I think it's gonna go really fast so that's really all I have to say about that one <laughs> um, I'm not very far but I love it and this I think has to be done maybe by the end of November so I do have to get cranking on it it's in a Jody Brown Mrs. Brown's bag I don't remember what this print is but it's lovely and then the other um, test knit that I signed up for is, and I'm not very far, the pattern was just given to us this morning, but we'd gotten um, information to do our swatch. And that is um, the Nadia cardigan by Vanessa Smith Designs. And she had a pullover that came out a while ago, and now she's doing a cardigan version of it. And it's this great textured stitch pattern. So I, I did swatch. Here's my swatch. So the whole cardigan is gonna be this textured stitch pattern. This is a more tight fitting cardigan. It's designed to have like one to three inches of ease, I believe, I think. Um, I could be getting my two test knits confused. Um, Again, it was supposed to be cropped, but you can make it longer, so I will be making it longer. I only have five skeins of the yarn that I'm using, which is Sugar Plum Circus Tweed in Black Walnut, which is really pretty. So I'm definitely gonna make it full length, but I might, depending on how my yarn situation is, I may only make like three quarter length sleeves or short sleeves, we'll see. I'm going to see where my yarn takes me with this one. Um, and so when I did my gauge swatch, I, I swatched and I washed it, but I kept it connected to this, this cake because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to use it. So, so I am probably going to start this on, like start the sweater on Sunday because I want that cord from my harvest to use with the size needle I need <laughs> for the Nadia. So yeah, that's that's it for my works in progress. I'm I have really ambitious for my sweaters at the end of the year. I do have a few gift knits I have to do. I'm gonna be pulling out some of my sock tubes that I had cranked earlier this year, and I'm planning to make sock tube socks for my mom, my dad, my husband, um, 
I don't know who else. I have a pair started for my sister-in-law. I have those socks for Claire. I have to make at least one pair of socks for Milo. So I still have a lot of sock knitting to do, but those tubes should help quite a bit. And then um, I have a couple, so I have one skein like this and one skein that's just um, like a more of a gray, but this is a uh, yarn from Ginger Snap and this is called Storm Clouds and it's the Puff Bulky yarn. And I'm gonna make a couple hats that could work for a few few things going on. Um, Cause there's also birthdays that happen and friends, uh, teachers. So I'm gonna be making a few bulky hats. And then my dad really would like a cowl. And this is just shows how much I love my dad because I've had the pattern and the yarn to make myself the Getting Warmer Cowl by Esbas Tricot for years. And it's just a, looks like a, just a beautiful garter cowl that kind of gets um, snuggly and then it gets a little bit wider to kind of go down and keep like this part of your body warm too. And I have this wolf folk, um, I think it's Luft, I don't remember. Yeah, it's right in front of my face. This wolf folk Luft. And if you've never touched this yarn, it is super soft. <laughs> I really want it for myself, but I also really love my dad. And I think my dad, I mean, he still takes the dog out every day. I mean, I have Penelope and they have Toby and he still takes the dog out every day in the winter. So I think this would be good for him. If for some reason I make it, and it seems like it wouldn't be, it, I mean, I would have to keep it. But yeah, I think I'm gonna sacrifice and give that one to my dad. And then my mom's just gonna get two pairs of socks from me this year. I already made her the read more and then I will give her a cranked pair um, as well. And then my sister's shawl. I mean, this is, the, and then, you know, ornaments. Like this is the time of year where like I get crazy, but like I find extra energy for knitting somehow and I'm able to get it all done. So, and I did, a while ago, I mean, I'd say like July, August, purchase the Woolens and Nosh Advent sock set. I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. Well, I might spoil a little, but, um, so if you have ordered this and haven't received it, you may wanna just go through this really quickly. But um, I saw so many people making these socks last year and I really wanted to get on the train. And I have found finally, after several years that like, I love the idea of a skein a day advent, but I have a lot of them sitting around and I haven't made anything with them yet. <laughs> so, and I've actually even de-stashed some of them. So I just realized that's not really the best thing for me to do, but advent socks, yes, that is the best thing for me to do. So her socks, and I haven't peeked, but they come in this bag and um, they come with two ends for you to cast on two at a time. And then it's this really adorable little bag. And then I asked, I ordered also the matching mini skein and this is on her Targi sock. So this is like a color that goes throughout the sock. Um, so every color is separated by um, a stripe like this. And then there were a few goodies that came that I'll just show really quickly. There's some stickers by um, M to the third, which I've watched her podcast before, and these are beautiful. I am not a stickers person, but they're really cute. They might go might go on my daughter's stocking or something because she's very much she's very artistic, and I think she would appreciate it. And then this stitch marker from Charmed and Dangerous. It's a little. So cute. I don't think I've ever gotten a Charmed and Dangerous stitch marker. So I love them. And then it came with this card that talks about the Advent. I'm not going to read it to you, but she says, this is your Advent and you're allowed to work it up however you wish. Knit it, crochet it all in one sitting, take your time, work a stripe a day, knit it for your birthday, winter holiday, or just because. Um, and then and I thought, I'm not waiting until December 1st. This is going to be the next sock I cast on. <laughs> so I'm probably going to cast this on and I just won't show it until 
after the holidays um, because I understand some people will definitely do the stripe a day during Advent and I think that's really cool. That's just not, I had permission to do what I want. So I'm gonna do what I want, but I will be very respectful here and I won't show it until probably after the holidays. <laughs> All right, that is it for the knitting today. Sorry, I know this is long. Okay, book club, boy did I read. Um, since we last spoke, I finished Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I gave that three stars. I thought it was okay. Um, I didn't dislike it at all. It's kind of one of those books that um, when you read a lot in the same genre, some of them kind of feel familiar or you, it, it seems similar to something else I read. It was fine. It was it was good. Um, definitely, if you like Colleen Hoover, if you like a romance, I think it, it's good. Not like a top one for me, but it wasn't bad. Then I, so I should preface this by saying Audible had a sale a couple, like last month, where things were discounted by a lot. So I bought all the Bridgerton books for like under $4 a piece. To me, it seemed like a really good deal. And so I read or listened to The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn, and I gave that three stars. I thought it was really interesting because I've obviously seen the first two seasons of Bridgerton on Netflix, and this was very different. Kate and Antony's story in the book is very quite different to what happened on the screen. So it was really interesting. And... I felt that in the book, their story was very similar. I mean, not totally, but kind of similar to uh, Simon and Daphne's, which was interesting. Anyway, I thought it was fine. And then I read an offer from a gentleman, which was Benedict's story. And that one I really liked. I gave that one four stars. I, I think that is, to me, the best one out of the series so far. I wouldn't say that it, like from watching the show that I expected Benedict's story to be my favorite, but I thought that the story was the most unique of all of them. It had sort of a, a really fun, interesting feel to it. it. It just felt more genuine than some of the other ones. After that, I read um, Maybe Not by Colleen Hoover, which was like a really short kind of, I think it was called a 1.5 after maybe someday. I only gave that two stars. I didn't really like it. So then I went back <laughs> and I read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is Penelope and Colin's story. And I gave that one three stars too. I mean, sometimes there are some things about these books that are so similar that like you shouldn't read them all in a row because I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's a bit repetitive. <laughs> But it was okay. I, I didn't, I probably liked this one better than um, The Viscount Who Loved Me, if that's, so maybe this was like a 3.25 as opposed to a 3.0. I mean, I'm giving stars, not point system. Sorry about that. And then I read, so this was a weird one. I decided to break things up and read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I saw The Cozy Moth on Instagram posted this book and she said she loved it. She read it in one day. It was incredible. And I just thought I'm going on a plane and I've read a lot of Bridgerton lately. Maybe something different would be good. So I picked that one up and I don't know. Some, I, one of you reached out to me on Instagram when I put it on my stories and said that you hated it and that people either love it or hate it. And I totally get it. With this one, I did end up in the middle. <laughs> so the main premise of this one is a woman who, okay, I'm going to say this in a way that is not reflective of how I feel about it, but who had a relationship with her teacher when she was away at a boarding school. And as an adult, how she to this day views it as, um, like she was the bad person, they were a special connection, blah, 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 blah. And sort of on the other part of what's going on in this book is that he is 
being accused of rape by more students and how she sort of has to reconcile her past, what she believes she did, what he did, what's right and wrong, who's right and wrong. It was really interesting. I have trouble reading these types of books when, because we all know that underage girls cannot consent and it's rape no matter what. So I thought being, that this was written by a woman and I thought it was a really interesting exploration into her psyche, which is why I don't think I hated it. Like I hated another book that I read once, a similar topic, but I felt like it wasn't handled as well as this. I'm not gonna run back to this uh, genre again, but it was an interesting read. Um, I didn't hate it. I don't think I liked it. So I put it right at the three star range for me. Like it was okay to read, but I wouldn't read it again. And I found it interesting. And that was about the deepest feeling that I could let myself have about it. So that was kind of a weird one. So then I went back to Bridgerton and I read To Sir Philip with Love. And I think I started to have a little Bridgerton burnout with this one. This was Eloise's story. And while I thought it was good, I definitely fell asleep listening to it on my plane ride home from uh, Santa Fe because it was midnight and I was exhausted. And I didn't feel like I missed out on that much. So I finished it, but there were definitely some gaps. But I got the gist of it and generally I liked it. I thought um, when you listen on Audible, all of these have like an epilogue and then they have like another epilogue. And this second epilogue was the only one where I was like, eh, I don't like that one. Like it didn't feel like it fit. And sometimes those epilogues will like ruin future books for you. So I don't know. I'm not like, I'm not crazy about these books. So I don't really care if it ruins something for me. Um, but I did, um, it was fine. They're fine. They're all fine. It was a three star one for me as well. And then I finished a book that I really liked called You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen McManus. She is the author of another book that I read called One of Us is Lying that I really liked. And this one I really liked too. I felt it was kind of a, I have a few more of her books on my Audible that I'll probably go back to sooner rather than later because I really did enjoy this one. But there seems to be a definite formula that was apparent in One of Us is Lying that also happened in this book, but it was good. So basically these three teenagers, I think they're all seniors in high school, who used to be friends, meet together uh, this one day before school and kind of chance meeting. And they all think like, remember that time that we skipped school and we had the best day ever? Let's, let's go do that again. And weirdly, they all decide to do it. <laughs> and um, then they go, uh, to an art studio. So, okay. Okay. So again, there's like a teacher and student sort of romance, but it didn't get into anything gross. It was just like crossing lines. But so this one kid wants to go to this one area because the teacher that he's having a relationship with is there. They see a kid from their school go into the building. They follow him and he's dead. And so the mystery is what happened? Why did it happen? And it all kind of unfolds over the course of this one day off. So it's sort of like the worst version of Ferris Bueller's day off that you can think of. I thought it was good. I thought the ending was okay, <laughs> um, but I, I did like it. So I think I have the sequel to One of Us is Lying, and then another one by Karen McManus. And she's got a nice like mystery writing style I that I do enjoy, even though they're, it's like young adult. I mean, I never have a problem with young adult. What am I saying? But I liked it a lot. So I would recommend that one. Of all of the books that I read, that is the one out of this grouping that I would recommend for sure. Yeah. And right now I am, I am rereading. <laughs> If, if you haven't caught on, I'm in this weird romance cycle right now. I went through like the fantasy and now I'm into the romance. Um, 
so yeah, I restarted on my Audible today, uh, Court of Thorns and Roses. I just felt like it was time to give this a reread as we go into winter. And yeah, so I'm listening to that. I'm also listening to Red Handed by Sarudi Bala and Hannah McGuire. It's a podcast that I listen to. And this is the book that they wrote. I'm not loving it. I really like the podcast. Uh, they're from across the pond in England, and I really like their take on some things, and I'm not loving the new book. So I just kind of put it on sometimes, like when I'm cleaning, to kind of get through some minutes. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not loving it. It's just, I think I like it better when they're doing their banter and doing their podcast format rather than, you know, those things they really worked really hard on. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, that's, it's just my opinion. Uh, and then I am reading A Curse of Blood and Stone by K.A. Tucker, which is a sequel to a fantasy book I read before. After this, I know that I'm going to be starting The Accidental Archivist by my friend Angie, and then I'm also going to be starting Olga Dies Dreaming. I don't remember the author's name, but it's a book that I picked up that I want to listen to next. So I'll probably force myself to finish Red Handed before I start on the next Court of Thorns and Roses book. And then I will probably read Olga Dies Dreaming before I finish the series. I have already reached my reading goal for the year. I had a goal on Goodreads of 50 books and I have read 51 already. So I now I'm just like, I can afford a reread or two. <laughs> But anyway, so that's all I have for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope I wasn't too crazy. <laughs> and yeah, wish me luck going into holiday knitting. And if you need luck for either a Stephen West make-along or anything else you're working on, you have it. If you are working on that Stephen West make-along, I salute you. As soon as I saw that first clue, I just thought, I'm glad I didn't sign up for it this year. I think it looks really cool. It would have been another shawl that I make that I don't wear. I've seen a few of them that are finished that look really, really good, but that looks fiddly. And I don't think I had the brain capacity for that this year. <laughs> so good luck with whatever is on your needles, if you need it, or if you're just relaxing, that's great too. Let me know if you have any book recommendations. Clearly I am a reading machine right now, so pile them on me and I will see you next time. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.